you know, for the graphite noobs out there, why is graphite important as a material and batteries? And what is special about your graphite versus other graphites? And I know there's like a artificial versus non-artificial graphite yep. sort of trend that you guys play into as well. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, when you look and, and Elon's got kind of a, a, a quote on this of what these batteries really are, they talk about lithium ion batteries. They should really be called nickel graphite batteries, right? I mean, the, the positive electrode, and he said something like the lithium is the salt on the salad or something like this. And so the, <laughs> the positive electrode is uh, typically a nickel manganese cobalt layered oxide or a nickel um, cobalt aluminum NCA material. And these things can be on the order of 90% nickel, right? And the other side of the electrode that acts as the host for the lithium as the cell is charged is all graphite. And so the lithium intercalates into the graphite during charge and comes out and returns to that NMC or NCA type cathode um, during discharge. So the, the graphite is, you know, half of the battery that makes the whole thing work. And when you wow. look at the uh, degradation of batteries, you know, they, they lose charge over time because lithium reacts to these side reactions. And, and a really kind of famous one that's talked about is called the SEI or solid electrolyte interface. And essentially the lithium that goes in the graphite is very reactive and some of it reacts with the electrolyte during charge and forms these passivating films and that consumes some of the charge and leads to fade. So really stable graphites have very low reactivity with, with the electrolyte so that you lose less of your lithium over time. So that was really our goal was to build materials that were very stable and could support extremely long cycle life. And what, what we saw you know, several years ago and is really becoming apparent, I would say over the past five years and all of the market reports are now indicating this, is that synthetic graphite, are, synthetic graphite materials are gonna have the uh, dominant role in the supply chain for electric vehicles and energy storage systems and the, compared to natural graphite. So the distinction there is natural graphite, you, you dig out of, the, out of the ground and it is already graphitic carbon. So after being in the earth, the pressure and the temperature and the time has turned it into perfectly crystalline graphite. And artificial graphite or synthetic graphite, you hear both terms, is essentially taking some other carbon source and heating it up to say 3000 degrees uh, to, to get the perfect graphitic structure. And so um, I would say that it is still not 100% clear within the industry why synthetic graphites perform so much better than natural on a cycle life perspective, um, but it's clear that they do. And so that's what really shifted the group out of Australia's focus back in 2016, 17, from natural graphite to synthetic because they said in doing their homework, they said, this is the way of the future. Right. And, and so you mentioned that like the Gigafactory Nevada uses 30,000 tons of some sort of graphite. Is that synthetic or natural or? Uh, it, it could be both a blend. They have different products running through there as well. Right. So I, I don't know, but I would I would expect that the predominant amount of that is synthetic graphite, because as as the industry has kind of shown that that's what's going to support the best performance in uh, long life applications of vehicle and storage systems.